Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I'm excited to share um, some more butterfly rearing adventures with you and to talk to you about the life history of Spicebush Swallowtail. Um, it's one of our most beautiful and interesting swallowtails and um, its larvae, its pupa and adults um, are all great examples of adaptive coloration. Its habitats include um, deciduous woodlands. Uh, typically, uh, it stays close to the ground, and you'll find it in woodlands, swamps, uh, which are also known as forested wetlands, stream banks, residential gardens, and parks where its woody um, host plant species, including spicebush and sassafras, occur. It ranges throughout the eastern United States. Uh, it is more common in the south, but it ranges from southern Canada down to Florida, west to Oklahoma and central Texas, and it occasionally will stray into North Dakota, central Colorado, and even sometimes to Cuba. It tends to have two to three broods per year. Um, it's active April through October throughout much of the United States. It only has two generations um, in the north, and it'll have three or more um, in the south, uh, like in states like Florida, um, where it can be active March through December. As far as identification goes, the adults overall are black with a three and a half to four and a half inch wingspan, and of course the conspicuous um, tails on each hind wing. Um, that swallowtails are named for. Uh, the top of the fore wings and the hind wings um, have borders of pale greenish to ivory spots. And the hind wing also has a bright orange spot along the inner margin nearest the abdomen. The hind wing of males has um, a sheen or a patch of um, iridescent blue-green scales. So this is one of the butterflies uh, we reared and released. I believe it's a male. I see that blue-green coloration. The hind wing of the females, on the other hand, it's more just a true blue sheen. The underside of the hind wings um, has marginal ivory-colored spots. Uh, but there are also two rows of bright orange spots with um, a blue-green patch or sheen that has that orange spot missing on the interior row. So you can see that there where there, it looks like it skips an orange spot. And that helps you tell it apart from black swallowtail, which... Um, doesn't have that blue-green patch and has two complete rows of orange spots. The adult butterflies uh, live for 6 to 14 days and they feed on lots of different nectar plants um, and breed during that time. Spicebush swallowtail eggs are uh, cream to a light uh, greenish-white color round um, and laid singly underneath um, the leaves of the host plants. They're in this stage for four to ten days depending on temperature and the species of the host plant. And they're laid on young trees on the leaf undersides uh, about one to six feet above the ground. And there's one you can see it's starting to turn color and just about to hatch. And then here it is, newly hatched. Kudos to my friend Rita for capturing this. And uh, there is residual yolk left in the egg when these little guys hatch. So they go ahead and um, eat the eggshell as well as that residual um, yolk for extra nutrients. That's their first meal. Here's a closer look at this little bumpy, isn't he cute little little thing that looks like uh, bird poop when they're young. So the caterpillars um, stay in that stage for three to four weeks 
And uh, initially they do look like um, bird or other animal droppings for camouflage. And they tend to be brown. Um, their head end is larger. And as they get bigger, they get a white sort of saddle shaped marks on their side. And they use threads to make uh, leaf tents for themselves to hide. So they weave a silken um, mat that as it dries, the silk threads shrink and fold the leaf over um, to hide them. So here's a look at uh, one of those little leaf tents that the early instar has made on uh, some spice bush. And Rita is carefully peeling back that leaf to check on it. And you can see how teeny tiny they are. And you can see that um, silken mat that it's used to make that little shelter for itself. As the caterpillars get larger, they move through uh, various um, kind of bird poop looking instars until they get to the last, the fifth instar. And they turn a brilliant green um, with, a, with large black and yellow, very alarming um, eye spots on the thorax. And that helps it appear to look like um, a predator and these spots are behind the, um, the true head of the caterpillar. So here you can see there are four caterpillars on um, the leaves here, and two are still in that more like bird poop looking phase, and two have um, changed into that fifth instar to look like a snake or a tree frog or something like that. So. There's a closer look at what the different instars can look like. And that fifth instar um, can be over two inches long. And as it ages, its um, underbelly turns a, a brown burgundy color. But you can see the, the head end is much more swollen. Um, and you can see those, like the black pupil looking part to those eye spots. There's even a white patch that sort of mimics um, like glistening eyes. It's just amazing how their colors can change, their looks can change with time. And there's that uh, brown belly that I mentioned on um, quite a mature fifth instar uh, caterpillar. And you can also see they have rows of blue spots outlined in black. And right before pupation, that fifth instar will change to a bright uh, banana yellow in color. And they get really restless. They tend to move off of their host plant. Um, and if you're rearing them inside, they start wandering around the habitat cage. Um, they and what they're trying to do is just find a good place to pupate and form their chrysalis. This one wandered all over the habitat cage and I believe finally settled on, uh, for some reason, underneath the layers of paper towel. And here's some footage of uh, the chrysalis formation. So you can see they take on this sort of comma shape and they attach themselves to the substrate, in this case, the top of the habitat with a thin but very strong strand of silk. And they sort of kind of create a little um, hammock for themselves to, to hold on. So this species is in um, the chrysalis stage for 10 to 20 days if it's the early generations that aren't going to overwinter. Um, the overwintering pupa, um, also known as the diapause uh, pupa, um, they're in that state for about eight months. And the early um, generations are uh, usually green, but the ones that overwinter, um, are always are always brown and so these caterpillars 
um, have this special ability to you know, see the color of the substrate that they are attached to, and they can adjust the amount of green, yellow, or brown um, to match whatever they're on, whether it's a, a green leaf plant or um, a brown color to blend in with a twig or look like a curled dead leaf on a twig um, or to blend in with the, the dead leaf litter on the forest floor. So again, here's that comma uh, formation. You can see the silken threads and the variation in color um, that they can form. So uh, the one on the right, uh, very green in color, and that one uh, formed its chrysalis in August and actually emerged, surprised us, in um, late September. And the ones on the left, um, those ended up overwintering and we didn't see them emerge till the very end of May, beginning of June. The uh, chrysalis has a characteristic look regardless of the color with two anterior horn-like structures um, and again secured wherever they decide to um, set up shop with that strong silk thread. Emergence is dependent upon temperature, and the males uh, tend to emerge first. Here's one that we um, overwintered in uh, my unheated garage. I kept them sprayed with water throughout the winter so that they didn't uh, dry out, and we put them out on the front porch to get them acclimated to spring temperatures in early May. And we had them emerge end of May, very beginning of June of this year. So there are some photos of some of the adult butterflies that we had reared in the store and at home. In general, the male butterflies patrol the woods, roadsides, and woodland edges to find females. Um, and the females lay single eggs on the leaves of their host plants. They also do courtship flights where the males hover above the females. So you may see that behavior. As far as host plants go, um, they lay eggs on members of the laurel family, the Lauraceae. And uh, those species include spicebush, Lindera benzoan, and sassafras, sassafras albidum. So that's what we reared these guys on. Further south, they might also use red bay in the Persia genus or other species in that genus, as well as camphor trees, Cinnamomum camphora, but please note that this is a non-native and invasive species and shouldn't be planted. There are other reports um, of this species using um, things outside of the Lauraceae family, so things like um, prickly ash, Xanthoxylum americanum, um, prunus, cerasus, other things in the Fabaceae family, um, tulip tree, and magnolias, uh, but that definitely needs further uh, verification. As far as adult nectar species go, they enjoy native wildflowers like verbena, milkweeds, uh, further south, azaleas in the rhododendron genus, um, and sweet pepperbush, Clethra alnifolia. Um, honeysuckles, jewelweed, thistles, dogbane, joe pieweed, purple coneflower, blazing star, phlox, um, things like cherries in the prunus genus, and buttonbush. They have a relatively long proboscis compared to their overall size, and they can access nectar in both um, long and short tubed wildflowers. A landscape scale threat that they're facing is laurel uh, wilt fungus, which kills all of their known caterpillar host plants and is spread by the introduced red bay ambrosia beetle. So this might even be able, the fungus may be able to survive the harsh winters um, in its northernmost range. So to help this species, we can certainly um, plant their native larval host plants and plenty of nectar species in our own yards. And uh, be sure that those plants that you're selecting are coming from nurseries that aren't treating them with systemic insecticides. So usually your native plant nursery sources are 
uh, your most reliable. As far as um, other concerns, predators, there are generalist predators of Lepidopteran um, caterpillars, including many of our songbirds and ants and other insects. This particular species has at least two specialist tachinid flies and one ichneumonid wasp uh, parasitoids. But they've developed good defenses. They build their leaf shelters in um, all five larval instars. The first four instars are camouflaged to look like bird um, or lizard droppings and uh, have false eye spots. And then those green fifth instars have that very swollen thorax, very bold, bulging pupil eye spots um, that help them mimic um, predators like snakes and tree frogs and lizards. And all instars um, also have two horn-like uh, bright yellow organs behind their true head, and they can excrete. Um, extrude those when threatened. They'll rear their heads back, pop those organs out, um, and smear their predators with chemical repellent, um, which is very effective against things like ants. So we didn't grab footage of that. I'll throw a link in um, that has some great photos though. And they're also, you know, very cryptic. Um, the yellow pre-pupa uh, are cryptically colored yellow as they're wandering away from their host plant through the leaf liner looking for a pupation site, um, their ability to alter the color of their um, chrysalis to match their surroundings, and then the adults mimicking poisonous and distasteful pipe vine swallowtails will all give them a good chance of survival. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this beautiful uh, spicebush swallowtail species in all of its forms, and we'll consider planting um, host plants like spice bush and sassafras and lots of nectar species. I have lots of those including both host plants coming for our native plant sale that starts uh, August 26. And if you enjoyed this uh, check out some other Monday with Martha posts about Lepidoptera, life histories and other information. Um, lots of things about monarchs in uh, post numbers 816 5961 and 114, uh, Carner Blue Butterfly in number 9, uh, Eastern Tiger Swallowtail in number 15, um, and uh, Giant Leopard Moth in number 113. Stop by the store and see us. We have uh, more Spice Bush Swallowtail uh, caterpillars going and uh, plenty of monarchs to look at as well. Take care, have a good week, and if you're out and about, take a look, see if you can find your own spice bush swallowtails.